in the quasi linear domain the social choice function can be actually decomposed into two components so you have already defined that uh, this social choice function maps each of this uh, the the cartesian product of all the type sets so the type profiles into an outcome now outcome has two components we have already discussed it the allocation component and the payment co component the allocation comes from the set a and payment comes from the set uh, r to the n one for each of these players and uh, now what we can do is uh, we can actually decompose this f into two parts so one function which maps this uh, uh, theta into a and the other component which maps this theta into r to the n and we are going to call each of those things as the the first component as the allocation rule and that is what we will be denoting with this lowercase f so what what does that do so if each of these players report their uh, types uh, it will take a allocation decision which will come from this a so uh, uh, to give an example each of these players suppose are saying how much they value a specific object then the indivisible uh, item allocation just gives this item to one of these agents that is one allocation now this of this each of these types are denoted by lowercase theta i so therefore f of theta 1 to theta n is essentially an alternative which is uh, living in this set a and uh, the second component uh, this component here is denoted by p so is this is essentially a collection of uh, uh, of functions so let us look at the the ith component of this uh, uh, of this vector so the ith uh, ith function so this is a uh, this is a vector of functions because uh, we'll have to define the payment for each of these players so the play uh, for player i it is defined in the following way that uh, if they report their types in this way uh, uh, each of these players then it will pick one real number and notice that this real number can be either positive or negative so which means that in the uh, remember our the definition of our utility our utility had this form that v i of a comma theta i minus pi i so essentially this pi i is nothing but the uh, the real number value of that so uh, we can as well replace that by p i of theta 1 to theta n so that's uh, both both these things are the same now um, if this p i is positive that means this agent is asked to pay so you purchase an object and you also ask to pay certain amount of money so therefore there is a difference um, but if, uh, if the pi itself is negative that means the agent is getting paid so not only uh, it uh, gets allocated also gets some amount of compensation money and those those setups are also admissible under this uh, under under this model so as before this pi pi 1 to pi uh, theta 1 to theta n is essentially one payment a real number uh, which is living in this uh, set r let us look at some of this allocation rules to understand what uh, what it means so uh, one of the very straightforward and uh, not so interesting uh, allocation rule is a constant allocation rule. no matter whatever the agents are choosing uh, you are going to choose this uh, allocation a and you are completely agnostic about the types of the agents so that is that is a constant rule uh, not very interesting one the the second rule that we have already discussed uh, to a certain extent this is known as the dictatorial rule so suppose we identify a specific player and call that uh, player the dictator and we are going to pick the alternative or the allocation which maximizes its valuation and we don't look at the uh, the types of any other player so here even though uh, this type uh, this type vector has lots of components so theta d is the the dictator's uh, uh, type and theta minus d is the the type of all the other players uh, apart from the dictator but uh, this allocation function of this um, uh, rule f does not look at anybody else's it is just picking that uh, allocation which maximizes the valuation of this player right so that is a dictatorial a mechanism or allocation rule could be something which is known as the allocatively efficient rule and also sometimes called the utilitarian rule. so what does that mean so suppose we look at the the sum of the values of all the agents 
so different people so if you pick a specific alternative let's say building a bridge or building a park uh, building a museum that gives different valuation for different players so there maybe there are lots of people uh, in the population who values environment more lots of people who uh, values transportation more and so on so uh, we are taking the sum of the values of all the agents and picking that uh, allocation which maximizes that sum so if, if we do that then what we are going to call that allocation uh, 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 is what is known as the allocatively efficient. So we are taking the sum, we are picking that alternative that maximizes the sum. Um, just to uh, keep a note here that this is different from Pareto efficiency, even though sometimes we'll be um, a little loose in uh, saying what uh, what kind of efficiency it is, and we will just say that in the context of quasi linear um, uh, uh, mechanism design. Uh, we'll just say that it is an efficient rule. What we mean actually is the allocative efficient rule, not a Pareto efficient rule. So Pareto efficiency is a property that is defined for the outcome, which also considers uh, the payment. So this is only looking at the, the valuation component. Um, and we'll, we'll see a, a connection very soon, how we can connect this uh, allocative efficient rule and the Pareto efficient rule. Uh, in, in some sense, you can think of Pareto efficiency it is uh, making a, a kind of vector to be better off. So uh, for each of these agents, the utility should be better off um, and there should be some agent for whom it is strictly better off. While allocatively efficient efficiency is looking at an aggregated matrix, taking the sum and picking the alternative that maximizes that, uh, uh, that sum. Uh, there could be some cases where some people might be uh, getting less valuation than other people. Uh, but yes, uh, this is how it is. Allocative efficiency just maximizes the sum. So the, the fourth uh, example of a uh, allocation rule is what is known as an affine maximizer rule. This is just a generalization of the of the previous rule. So here we are, what we were doing is we are just taking the simple sum of all the players. We are not distinguishing between different agents. In some sense, you are being fair to all the agents in some equal way. But suppose we don't do that, we become a little unequal and put certain weights on each of these agents. So let's say we put uh, some uh, weights lambda for each of these players, take that weighted sum of their valuations and then translate that, uh, 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 that weighted sum with a function which is a function of that alternative or the allocation. So uh, that is that is the reason this is called affine maximizer because this is now an affine sum. We are taking the uh, the weighted um, weighted combination of all these valuations of all the players, and then you are translating with respect to this allocation, uh, giving a selective biases to certain allocation, and you are picking that alternative that maximizes this affine sum. Of course, uh, to define an affine maximizer, you'll first have to come up with all these lambda i's that will be fixed, and also this kappa. Which is uh, which is the function which translates this uh, uh, the allocations, and we are also going to assume that this lambda i's are not all zero, so they are non-negative uh, uh, quantities, but not all of them are uh, equal to zero. So then the the type of mechanism, the type of uh, allocation rule that we get is uh, known as the affine maximizer. Rule. Uh, you can think of so uh, still we are in the in the domain of utilitarian uh, rules allocation rules that we are uh, looking at so maybe you are just taking the sum or you are taking a weighted sum but what if you do something like a egalitarian so a more equalized treatment of all the agents so how do you what do i mean by this egalitarian treatment suppose we look at the valuation uh, uh, of a of a specific agent uh, at its type and for a specific allocation A. Now we look at for that particular allocation, fix that allocation here and look at what is the worst uh, valuation in the whole population. Who is getting worse off if we pick this alternative, uh, this uh, uh, allocation and then pick that uh, allocation which maximizes that minimum value. So in some sense we are actually uh, uh, giving a push to the, the lowest possible uh, valuation in the whole population and we are maximizing the minimum of the valuation in this uh, in the whole population 
if if we do that that kind of a allocation rule is known as the max mean uh, allocation rule uh, which is also called the egalitarian so you will see in some literature the the term egalitarian being used or uh, utilitarian is being used so egalitarian means that this is actually looking at the max mean while utilitarian is the sum of the valuations now that is uh, that that were a few examples about the allocation rule let us now look at the payment rules so uh, certain properties that we want from our payment rule uh, when we are uh, running this kind of mechanism the first thing is that uh, even though we are charging payment we are using payments transferable utilities it should not be the case that uh, the mechanism in order to satisfy certain properties run into a deficit that is now the mechanism designer uh, or a uh, or a person who is actually selling an object has to pump in money uh, to to run that mechanism so that condition is called no deficit that means the sum of these payments of all these agents should be non negative that means at the end of the day uh, there should not be uh, any money that will be needed to run this mechanism rather uh, the the mechanism designer might gain some amount of money or the transfer should be exactly equalized that someone is getting paid and someone is paying money and the sum is exactly equal to zero now the second uh, property is that of no subsidy this is uh, the property where uh, the payments are always non negative for all the agents so this is the on an aggregate level this is non negative here it is um, um, non negative for every agent of course no subsidy will imply it is no non deficit uh, but yes no subsidy is a more stricter condition so we are asking every agent to either pay or not pay at all but there won't be any situation where the mechanism will pay a specific agent and finally uh, the other property that we will be looking at uh, uh, later on is what is known as budget balance so this is when this no deficit condition is uh, um, is met with the equality uh, which means that uh, the the sum of the payment is essentially getting redistributed among these agents uh, someone is paying a certain amount of money and someone is getting paid but the sum of the payments is exactly equal to zero so this is this is desirable in certain settings because you don't really want to earn money or maybe gain a lot of money and we'll see that this could be a problem in certain mechanisms you don't want a lot of money to be uh, taken away just to run that mechanism uh, rather it will be very desirable that in order to run the mechanism if certain uh, certain uh, party certain of um, uh, agents are paying money which is being redistributed among the other agents that will be very desirable let us now recall the the definition of incentive compatibility that we defined long ago in the in the very beginning of this uh, of this section the, the mechanism design section so uh, in uh, we are going to reiterate the same definition in the context of quasi linear preferences and in in the context of mechanisms with transfers so we know that the mechanism is a tuple of this allocation and payment rule f comma p and we are going to call that mechanism dominant strategy incentive compatible uh, if the following thing happens we have already uh, seen a equivalent uh, thing so we, in in the previous definition of uh, dominant strategy incentive compatibility we have just written it in the terms of the utilities now we are going to write it explicitly in terms of the valuation and the payment so what uh, what are the two components the first component is the allocation decision which is given by this f and the second decision is this payment decision which is given by this p now what can happen is that uh, player i suppose player i's type true type is theta i and it can report theta i or misreport something else which is theta i prime now this dominant strategy incentive compatibility would ensure that when it reports its type theta i truthfully then this left hand side is the utility that that agent gets and um, the other agents can pick any type so it need not necessarily be their true types it could be true types or some false types whichever they want to choose but under the same condition that the other players are choosing the same uh, types uh, if player i changes its uh, type report to theta i prime then that utility is not going to be better than the utility that it gets when it uh, reports it truthfully so and this inequality should uh, get satisfied for all theta minus i tildes so theta minus i tilde for all the other agents and also for all theta i and theta i prime 
So if this holds, then we are going to call this mechanism to be domain strategy incentive compatible. So, in other words, uh, in uh, one-liner uh, definition would be that DSIC means that truth-telling is a weekly dominant strategy equilibrium. We have seen this in the previous case. Here, we are just writing it in the context of um, uh, mechanisms with transfers. And uh, we are also going to use some terminology and it is good to uh, uh, know that uh, because we will be using this kind of a terminology later on in this course. We are going to focus mostly on the allocation part. So, uh, in the in the quasi-linear domain, we are often very much interested just in the allocation. So, the allocation whether that is uh, uh, that is maximizing the sum of the valuation in some sense that is the social welfare maximizer or not. Uh, that is uh, that is a objective that we have, and payment serves as a as a mechanism or uh, as a artifact of. Uh, essentially making that happen uh, so it's not that we are jointly deciding of course the mechanism decides the allocation and payment jointly but um, the, the question that we will be uh, often asking that uh, whether we can implement and this is the term that we will be uh, using whether we can implement a function this allocation function uh, f using some payment rule in dominant strategies or is F implementable in dominant strategies by some payment rule. So as if the payment rule is not that important, as long as we can find some payment rule and um, we can implement that F, that uh, uh, payment will implement F in dominant strategies, we'll be happy. Our primary objective is to satisfy F and not the whole uh, combination of F and P. This will make more sense when we discuss more examples. Uh, but in some cases, we will uh, directly refer to f as the social choice function. So, even though in our uh, context we have uh, used f, capital F, which takes this uh, uh, capital theta and gives the outcome, which is a, a Cartesian product of allocation as well as these payments, but uh, sometimes only the, uh, yeah, this, this is the terminology that you will find in, in literature as well, that theta to a that itself is called the social choice function and we'll be calling that whether this social choice function f is implementable in dominant strategies or not. So that's just a, a kind of a terminology, uh, some nomenclature that uh, we'll, be, we'll be using. So yeah, so it, it will make sense when we discuss examples. So what actually needs to be satisfied for a dominant strategy incentive compatible mechanism? So let's say our mechanism is f comma p and suppose we have two players and their types are type sets are same theta uh, either their types have a high type or a low type and therefore the the function the allocation function uh, is a cartesian product uh, mapping from that cartesian product of these two type sets to the set of allocations so what should happen uh, you can so this is just writing down the same uh, expression so this uh, inequality um, for, for each of these cases, I am um, just doing one of them to um, to just give you a feeling. If you do it yourself, then you will be able to understand what is going on. Uh, if you just don't look at the uh, uh, this uh, inequalities and try to write down what is the DSIC conditions, that will uh, re reinforce the understanding of uh, what dominant strategy incentive compatibility is. So we are looking at player one first. So the valuation of that player 1, when uh, his true type, this player 1's true type is theta h and it is reporting uh, type, uh, its type to be theta h. Uh, so therefore the payment function also has the same thing. And the other player, player 2 is reporting any type, it need not be the, its uh, true type. Uh, this should be uh, at least as much as when he is reporting uh, his type to be theta l. Uh, so its true type is uh, theta h it is reporting misreporting to theta l and then this uh, this is the utility that that agent should get and this uh, this inequality is saying that reporting it truthfully is better than not not reporting it truthfully and this inequality should hold for all theta twos now we only have theta l and theta h so uh, we are just expanding it out Similarly, when player 1 has a, a, a type which is its true type is low type, then it should report it truthfully, uh, so report theta L truthfully and 
that utility should be more than the utility when he is misreporting. Even if its true type is theta l, it is misreporting to theta h. We'll see certain implications of this when we talk about options. Uh, but yeah, so this thing should also hold and they should hold for all theta too. So this is only for the inequalities, the same set of inequalities for player 1. Similarly, you can write it for player 2 and I don't want to spend time on that. So let us look at one specific property of the payment rule uh, that implements an allocation rule. So suppose we have a, a, a mechanism, uh, a mechanism with transfer. Uh, which is given by f comma p the allocation rule and the pay payment rule this is incentive compatible uh, so because it is incentive compatible we already have this pi's now let us define some other payment rule right so uh, a payment rule which is just adding another term so we look at the same the, the original payment so notice that this is a function of theta i and theta minus i the reported types of all these players and now for player i i am just forgetting its own type I'm just adding um, uh, a function which is function of theta minus i that is it's sort of constant from the point of view of player i so whatever the other players are choosing as their type uh, that determines that hi function and we are just taking the sum here now the question is the way we have so we have created a new set of payment functions so is uh, if we look at this uh, uh, mechanism f comma q instead of p now we have q uh, is that mechanism uh, dominant strategy incentive com compatible the answer is yes and why is that you can just write it down i mean you just write the uh, the conditions explicitly so all that we have here is this hi theta minus i tilde the, if you write down the uh, original expression and uh, that h i theta minus i tilde is uh, unchanged on both sides of this inequality. So essentially this uh, part will get uh, cancelled out and all that is left uh, that you are left with is the same inequality and because this f and p together was dominant strategy incentive compatible this inequality will always be true and for that reason you can always add this kind of a function h i theta minus i to a, a payment scheme which is already known to implement uh, the uh, the allocation rule f um, without uh, without the loss of uh, dominant strategy incentive compatibility so the summary is that if we can find a payment that implements an allocation rule then there exist uncountably many because hi could be arbitrary you can pick any kind of uh, hi um, uh, and many payments that can that can implement that the same uh, allocation rule the the converse question so here it is just saying that if you have a payment you have many payments but the question is when can we say that the payments that implement f differ only by this factor hi so in some sense we are uh, we are not only identifying a specific um, uh, payment we are identifying a specific payment up to uh, the the change uh, change of that payment with hi theta minus i so um, uh, you can find so there does not exist any other kind of payment which will actually implement it so if there exists any other payment that can only be written as a um, uh, as a factor uh, uh, an additive factor of hi theta minus i of the original payment so let me just give uh, the second implication of this incentive compatibility on payment and i leave that uh, the, the proof as an exercise so suppose um, there are two type profiles so one is theta so theta is nothing but theta i theta minus i as we have defined earlier and there is another uh, uh, type profile which is theta tilde where only player i's type is changing to theta i tilde other players types are still theta minus i and uh, let us assume that this uh, even though player i has changed its type so its uh, type has changed to theta i tilde the uh, the social choice outcome or the uh, the allocation outcome did not change so there could be some many situations you can think of it if um, player player i's type changes from theta i to theta i tilde it's not changing sufficiently to change the outcome altogether so if the outcome uh, the the uh, allocation outcome uh, is the same and if p implements uh, this uh, um, 
this function this allocation function in dominant strategies then what we are going to say we are going to conclude the claim is that the payment should also be the same and this is not very difficult to show you can just write down the the inequalities for dsic under these two conditions and use the fact that the allocation is the same uh, so that uh, the valuations uh, essentially cancel out from both ends and use it when uh, when you are using the theta i to be the true uh, type of player i uh, then what is the uh, implication of the dsic uh, condition and when uh, it is uh, theta i tilde so player i's true type is theta i tilde and uh, it is misreporting to theta i let us uh, write the corresponding condition and uh, the in the previous case when it's uh, true type is theta i and it is misreporting to theta i tilde what is the what is the corresponding condition uh, inequality for the dsic and you will find that this uh, this pi theta and pi uh, theta tilde both will be equal 